the protecting the environment, what we call as sustainable or whatever, organic farming and others, we are giving the solutions. The sustainability is the challenge and I would see two points, that is the feeding the growing population. Of course, uh, we are sufficient in some of the commodities that has to be sustained and even increased. Secondly, the quality of the environment. Both are now important, but these are the things where again we are respecting our traditional knowledge. And we are trying, as Dr. Prasanna Patak said, we were in hurry for adopting some of the practices, but now we realized that there are many things that can be scientifically proven and also adopted. And for that matter, these are the strength of the traditional aspect, I mean, uh, characteristics for which we are now discussing and we are emphasizing, blending it with the modern technologies and development technologies developed so far. Good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. So I want to say, uh, just share some of the things what Dr. Borgohai was telling about the roadmap and others. And our uh, Dr. Pathak sir also mentioned the validation of some of the, I mean, uh, traditional knowledge in the form of uh, some scientific justification and others. So, so this I will not uh, go because we all know that we are in the words of, uh, I mean, the protecting the environment, what we call as sustainable or whatever, organic farming and others, we are giving the solutions. The sustainability is the challenge. And I would see two points, that is the feeding the growing population. Of course, uh, we are sufficient in some of the commodities that has to be sustained and even increased. Secondly, the quality of the environment. Both are now important to do this. I think we have this traditional, strong traditional background in the Indian, and we have seen that we have uh, practice from ages, but the three aspects we cannot compromise, that is the cultivation and protecting the environment, that is the biological method of pest management and locally sustainable practices of crop production. So that can be, uh, I mean, in a nutshell, say that double cropping, miscropping, what are the object, I mean, agronomic manipulations, you can save the cropping system for diversification alerts. So these are the things which have to be strengthened in the view of the environment and food security. Such practices have significant role in achieving the sustainability and also the environmental quality. So uh, these are the pictorial description of the traditional knowledge. I will not repeat, but these are the things where again, we are respecting our traditional knowledge. And we are trying, as Dr. Prasanna Patak said, we were in hurry for adopting some of the practices, but now we realized that there are many things that can be scientifically proven and also adopted. And for that matter, these are the strength of the traditional aspect, I mean, uh, characteristics for which we are now discussing and we are emphasizing, blending it with the modern technologies and development technologies developed so far. So uh, there is a long list. Uh, Madam has rightly mentioned some documentation from the ICAR. So these are the traditional statewide. I just brought it a sample for the whole of the states in India. 19, we have different technologies, traditional practices, and some of them the Agriculture University has come up with some validation. I will show some samples. So uh, again, this is paramparik. You see, I brought this slide because we are also now promoting natural farming. In fact, in university, we are also starting a project on natural farming. So in that light, I have brought this one, the Bharatiya Prakritik Kiki Vebosta, I mean systems in different forms. So this organic farming, Zoevi Kiki, we see the natural farming, then the use of others, animal parts, this biodynamic farming, we also are uh, talking about the DCKC, Ponsagoibba KC, and the need to keep farming. So with this, uh, this is keeping in background what we are really doing in Assam in context. I have brought some examples. So these are the some practices which were practiced earlier. Nowadays also we are promoting that for in the first picture showing the birds versus for pest management others. And for water management, small field, we are making bugs. Then these are the 
indigenous system to be promoted as solution we will i will not repeat but this organic agriculture multiple cropping crop rotation they have that i mean uh, properties and we are allowing this one as dr bupam has mentioned the diversity that fly uh, we have enough number of diversity of crops not only in the crops the varieties as well farmers are also preserving and that has to be promoted and we can select some of them from the nutrition point of view so finally uh, that there is relationship between agricultural practices and biodiversity indigenous knowledge which is must and we are having it now the biodiversity has to be conserved and that is the i mean real challenge now is how we can and for that matter solution is the policy so that we can attain that sustainable development so this is uh, the how we can go ahead so the few examples as i said uh, the pathogens are also mentioned these were proved some weather prediction these are we know this dark saying it is in assam with dakor boson it is said for example for weather prediction uh, the first description i mean it is in assam is so in the last line if there is lightning on the northern side it indicates drought if it is on the southern side run for cover just to cover then it's on the eastern side there will be good production of betel vine so this is a common uh, plan in assam and if it is on the western side there will be floods so accordingly the farmers or forefathers they protected or uh, action were taken similarly indigenous water management practices was there that was published and some rationalized perceived rational has been given so this is in that book uh, dr patak has said so i just brought how how these practices can be adapted now even it has relevance so accordingly we can use the techniques to be revalidated re or to be modernized in uh, in relation to the situation so these are some of the pictures like uh, for uh, watering then lifting water from dam then bamboo drip bamboo drip irrigation underground water tank this is now we are all we all know in the high rainfall areas particularly water harvesting tank and others then agro advisory traditional system this is the uh, because if we it is said that if embankments are prepared at frequent interval at the field one can grow salipedi even at the hill, hill tops so that is the seg ben, seg uh, seg basin design of irrigation what we call so that is why the remark is the creation of seg basin structure for retaining rain water in the rice field that means rice is a water loving so these techniques we we can follow we can adopt and we also rectify then the uh, what dr borua was in the meeting said that the splitting of seed erican and puddle soil that can be soil can be tested seeing on there so these technologies has been uh, validated similarly for climate change yes we are now i mean facing this problem so for transplanting this is a technique in double transplanting so that was followed these techniques are have now relevance and we need to i mean adopt and uh, popularize among farmers with the situation so see so this is the last one i mean technology for example i have brought this is strategies for climate change stubbles of boro rice this is uh, summarized in assam so this uh, raising of return crop rice sometime we grow so there can be an another harvest so these things were practiced with not modern varieties or other technology developed that can be adapted so uh, of course these are some uh, pictures that are being practiced in the farmers using their local traditional practices so finally uh, i will not repeat this is the scene that why indian agriculture traditional agriculture are respected there are so many justifications they have explanations what now is the time of resurgence of organic agriculture we are uh, approaching so finally i draw this conclusion that different agricultural practices that are used by the native people directly or indirectly improve the biodiversity so that has to be promoted and for we need to pers uh, i mean preserve this unique indigenous knowledge because of all the scientific discoveries explored from the indigenous knowledge if it is lost then it will be it will directly affect the livelihood of the great civilization so uh, with this it is finally i would say that it's very important to make strong policies in order to conserve both indigenous knowledge and biodiversity so this is a very nut cell in con and continuation of rupam uh, borgois presentation what we are following in the university or trying to follow the other so i think in the days to come if we can see in that angle 
the conference of Thara will be justified, I think, and we can also adopt this. Thank you very much.